Welcome back. So at this point we've got our Azure server running Ubuntu in the cloud. We've logged in, we've got the dollar sign prompt there, and now we're going to set up the module software. The module software is in a container, and uh, the advantage of using containers is, is that we can use exactly the same software configuration in the cloud, in university labs, on your laptop, whether it's Windows or Mac. So it's not that you can't configure the, uh, the software we're going to use to work on your own installation. It is that it is absolutely standard. And that means that when we show you examples later on in the module that work, they'll work everywhere, they'll work uh, whatever machine. If you use a different configuration, that's not necessarily true. So this is the config we're going to support. Um, and uh, we're going to be using a Docker. It's very straightforward. So the way we configure this here on uh, this Ubuntu server, you'll see I'm taking this quite slow. You'll do it yourselves in a couple of minutes. So uh, we're just, let's see, where are we? Very simple. Of course, I know the command line is quite new to a lot of people. Um, we say sudo, which means super user. And you can see I'm just typing in these commands. Um, we're using apt is, allows us to install applications. sudo snap install docker. Uh, we type that. We wait a little while. Well, hardly any time at all, actually. Um, so you'll notice when working with cloud servers that the network connection is an awful, uh, awfully lot faster than uh, a Windows lab, PC or whatever configuration. So that's all you need to do in, to install Docker, which is our container management system. Uh, go to docker.com. There are uh, desktops for Windows, Mac, all the various other platforms. It's got version 19 here, it's pretty standard. And the next line is to actually get our container. And uh, let me just get the spelling exactly right. Yeah. So we just type docker, pull, now, as we're typing things on the command line, I'm trying to keep things straightforward. But as we go through, you'll see that we can actually combine commands and add various parameters and so on. But I'm keeping it simple here. Uh, and we say docker pull and the name of the container, which is me. And it is. in this window. So Jeremy Elman slash KF732 underscore 21S colon latest. And we're actually using the pull command. We only need pull uh, when we don't have the application working. Ah, this will happen to you as well. Docker re requires that we be super user. I have administrator privileges. So before you, uh, if you do get that error about permission denied, remember to type sudo first. Now, if you do this at home, this is a small container. It's about three gig um, and it takes about five, 10 minutes to download and install all the bits. But as you can see, when we're running this on Azure, it is extremely quick. Uh, same goes for AWS, actually, which we'll see later in the module that uh, this is running at network speeds. Uh, and that means that if we want to start a new um, virtual machine at some point, it is quite straightforward to uh, uh, do it 
do the live install. Now once we've completed the install, the container itself will be uh, built. It's not quite there yet, I don't think. Um, and then it's going to run in a web browser. Uh, there we go. Um, so our host is a little bit sluggish because we are using the uh, value proposition on the hard disks. But for the extra couple of seconds, uh, makes no difference. So one of the things that we'll need to consider as we go through later on is how long do you run virtual machines for? And the short answer is you should stop the virtual machine as soon as you have finished using it. If you are going to come back within an hour or two, then leave all the software installed and just restart it. We'll see how to do this in the next session. I'm just talking through whilst the download extraction is going on here. And um, if we're going to leave working for a couple of days, delete everything. So one point about Microsoft is they charge your credit for the virtual machine. They charge your credit for the disk space which is used. They charge your credit for the IP address. And um, even though the virtual machine, which is the most expensive part, is only three cents an hour, it does add up. So quite often, for the extra minute or so it takes to configure the system, configure the VM, think about deleting it to manage your uh, credit. We'll see how to do this in a minute. So I'm just going to um, wait for this to stop. Oh, it comes back to the prompt now. And it tells us this is the latest image. So another advantage of this is um, using containers is if I update that image, all these existing layers that aren't changed will stay the same on your machine and any additional changes would automatically get downloaded, which means that you not only get the latest version uh, of the software, that it will also stay updated. So what does this software do and where is it? I said it runs in a web browser and uh, I'm going to go through this in the next part of the video. So I'll be back with you momentarily.